What's going on, Bulls Nation? Welcome in to CHGO Bulls Post Game. Coming to you live from our studios here in the West Loop, downtown Chicago. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. Joined by my guys, Big Dave, Bow, Bow. BWL Sports, Bow. and <laughs> Will, <laughs> the GOAT, Godly, Will underscore Godly. He's grown. Our pal and producer, Joey Spathis on the controls. Joey Sweatpants. We are CSU underscore Bulls. Well, Bulls lose again. Hey, crack that. Crack it. There you are, buddy. Smoke if you got them. <laughs> God <right>. damn. <laughs> I am so sick of this team. How about y'all? I don't, don't talk to me. I'm taking a sip with you. Mm-mm. Bulls lose to the Nets 118-109. This was a weird one <sighs> because the Bulls <laughs> didn't play like ass in the first quarter. They didn't. It was new. It was refreshingly new. I was confused. Mm-mm. It was oddly unsettling to see the Bulls be the team jump out to a gigantic lead, mm-hmm. draining three after three after three. Yeah. And then the Bulls were like, don't panic, Matt. We got you. Mm-hmm. And then after they had themselves a 36-19 lead after one, they let the Nets put up 44 on them in the second quarter, yeah, and then the rest of the script played out like, okay, I feel like I'm in a more comfortable, safe space now. Correct. Uh, let me take care of some things first before I take care dive in things. here first. Uh, see, Dredd saying, I see pants. Yes, yes, you do. You see the pants, uh, or as I call them, the leg prisons. That's why the Bulls shot a this zillion why, percent in the first quarter. It's why, man. This is why, dog. Tur- turn the world upside down. The leg prisons are here. See, nice thing. Thank you, Julia. Y'all know I wear shorts, and I was very sad to put them away. But like I told Will, I'm not an insane person. When it, it starts snowing. It did snow today. I will put on some pants. And so that's what I did. I don't like it. I know, I, I know they look phenomenal because it's just what I do. But I still don't like it. All right? Not a happy fan. All right. Back to Jinx. And also, shout out to you, Will, for just being who you are. Back to this team. What the <laughs> hell? <laughs> what are we watching, man? What are we looking at? What are we tuning in into? That first quarter, like you said, Matt, it was great. It was fun to watch. Actual Patrick Williams have a pulse. Actual four Kobe, for four from three. Kobe White doing what he's been doing because it's that end of the month into December kind of situation. That's kind of when he gets hot and kicks it off. He was great. Even DeMar DeRozan got in on it and started hitting some shots. It was fun to watch. It was fun to see. Second quarter. They brought in the bench. Game over. (laughs) The game ended right then and there, and everything just kind of stopped. And, man, they were just really, really bad. I mean, Javon Carter was not great. Torrey Craig was not great. Drummond, I mean, I can't sit here and yell at these guys, but minus 21, minus 17, minus 25, minus 11. That was the bench. Nets bench outscored Bulls bench 40 to 13. Oh, I've been told that's bad. 40 to 13. I've been told, that's, to bad. I've been told again, that's bad. This is the comeuppance when the Bulls were trying to be competitive in games come all season up, long so far, up. relying on their bench. <laughs> that's what he said. They were relying on their bench to be the best part of this team to yeah. fight back into games when they were the team who had built themselves a big deficit in the first half. Correct. That's exactly where I was going to go. Is like We've talked about this a million times. The big three together is a huge negative. So when you're relying on role players fitting in and making them good, mm-hmm. that's a problem. When you're yeah. relying on the bench to come in and junk up games and get points in transition, like there are going to be days where that doesn't happen. And yeah. when the opponent shoots uh, eight trillion percent on threes, <laughs> it's hard to Can we fact check that. It's hard to run. Okay. They were the Nets were 25 of 53 on threes tonight. Number one, I saw a stat floating around: the most made threes against. Any Bulls team ever. Mm. That's a lot of threes. Making mm. history. They, there's just some crazy stats with this one. 53 threes. They only had, uh, they made 25. Only 16 uh, two-point field goals in this game, which is wild. Um, I believe they only took 12 shots at the rim. Mm-hmm. It was just, they were launching threes. And they're a team that has a bunch of like 3 and D guys right yeah they have a bunch of role players they have a bunch of like play finishers yeah and so when you don't have like a primary creator you got to shoot a lot of threes because that's what's gonna help you win games you need that variance and man the first quarter they were a disaster they couldn't make anything meanwhile the bulls started eight of ten on threes Mm -hmm. and proceeded to go four of 22 the rest of the way Mm -hmm. uh and it was the exact opposite the nets hit 11 of 16 threes in the second quarter the Bulls have hit 11 or fewer threes 
10 times this year in an entire game. Mm. And I believe... Drop that shit, Will. <laughs> tonight was one of them. No, no, no. They made 12. They made 12. Excuse me. Excuse me. They made 12. Hold on now. Uh, Don't cheat just, me out my one. Just like a weird math game. Yeah. And this is the thing. Like, when you get more than doubled up on threes... Oh, no. The Bulls did shoot 32. So, uh, not quite doubled up. But, like, that's... You want, you want some more weird math? Uh, shout out to uh, our guy Bulldog, Kevin Anderson, who put Bulldog. this out here. The Bulls set new season highs in the first quarter. For three pointers made, eight, ten assists, and point differential, which was a plus seventeen. The Bulls also set new season lows in the second quarter with opponents points, forty four, field goals made four, <laughs> and point differential minus twenty five. That's that's impressive. That you have to really be truly ass to do some things like that. That is impressive trash that we just sat here and impressive watched. Impressive trash. Impressive trash, dog. Seriously. That first quarter, and it wasn't like watching that first quarter, you were sitting there like, they're going to win this game. It was just cool to sit there and actually watch them look competent and actually, you know, make cuts and hit open shots and not turn it over so much and watch the t other team do that. Because that's what Brooklyn was doing in the first quarter, stepping on the baseline, throwing it off each other's legs, uh, missing wild shots. Yeah, that was cool to see for a change. Soon as that shift came in in that second quarter, and they just absolutely tattooed that bench, it's like the Bulls said, well, we took a best shot. What do you want me to do? Yeah, and the Nets went to a zone, basically, at the start of the second quarter. A zone! You got and, people out here. <laughs> and the zone. Bulls just like couldn't do anything with it. <laughs> Got to shoot over it. You, you, the Bulls yeah. used up all their makes <laughs> behind the three-point line in the first quarter. All their coins. They used up all their coins on that. Yeah. That sucks. <laughs> and, they, yeah, they just couldn't get the ball in the middle. They couldn't shoot threes. And, like, the Nets were taking away the middle. And that's kind of how the Bulls get their offense. They try to get paint touches, spray it out, offensive rebounds, draw fouls. That's, like, how they're – that's their recipe. Yes, sir. And so if you take away the paint, you take away the source of all their offense. Mm -hmm. And – you have to make all your threes, and they did that in Source the first of quarter. Their powers, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, they just completely collapsed after that. Yeah. And it's we've been talking about this since like CHEO started. Mm -hmm. As soon as the Bulls hit adversity, they shut down, yep. and they can't figure it out. And like Billy Donovan has talked about this a million times. Um, that's like the thing that they've had to get over. That's the thing that they've had to work through, and. Year three now, they just haven't been able to do it. And it's yeah. like, all right, well, if it's not going to happen now, then it's just not going to happen. Yeah, just feels that way. And, again, it's, it's continuing to do that same thing, you know, over and over and over again, which is why when we see that happen, why it's not just, like, excitement that comes out of us. It's just we're just waiting for that other shoe. You know, I'm happy that this stuff is happening. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's hitting the shot. But, of course, in this side, you're like, oh, well, I know how this is going to end. <laughs> but it's cool to see this happening. You know, and you're just waiting for that other shoe to just go splat and step on you and crush you. But at least it was a different storyline than a different shoe? the last 10 games in a row where okay. they've gotten down to, you know, 20-point deficits in the first quarter. Mm. They were up big, and then they lost it. They had, their, they had their fourth quarter in the first quarter. They did. And then the rest of the their first quarter in the second quarter. When they played the Nets last time in that in-season tournament, in that first quarter, they had 30 points against them. So this time they had 36. Like... And, again, they collapsed as the game went on. The same MO, you know, like all that stuff being used up. And then as soon as they get that adversity, that little pushback, it's everybody goes to sleep except DeMar. You know, uh, I'll give Zach also. Zach did a solid job too. But everything else, man, just wasn't there for them tonight. But, again, like, that's the problem because when they start losing a lead or things stop going their way, yeah. what do they do? They resort back to DeMar trying to save them. Yep. And that's like he was going one on five, man. and he was. <laughs> He's and, going yeah. one on five. And there are moments where he makes like there was a clip where he like made an insane turnaround jump shot, and they panned to Julian Phillips on the bench, and he was like, "Yeah, oh my yeah. god, this guy!" And like he can he can only take you so far. Correct. So when you're down ten or fifteen or twenty, you're gonna have a hard time coming back from that. Correct. But this is also again the these are the bigger picture issues. Mm -hmm. The Bulls team is going to have a ceiling when Demar is your best player because that's just kind of how it is when you're. Uh, building around a 34 year old oh, and dig. and when you yeah when things aren't working out your way and you can't do anything about it that's 
it's just going to be hard to come back from that. Mm-hmm. I'm so I just think this is hilarious. <laughs> I think it's hilarious. What's so funny about it, man? Well, it's just different means mm-hmm. and winding up at the same end. True. We've been yelling all off season about like when can we not get our asses kicked in the first quarter? When when can we have a game where we're not trying desperately to expend all this energy coming back from this big deficit? Yeah. And most times, more often than not, thus far this season, their comeback falls short. Correct. As opposed to successfully coming back. Mm-hmm. That's why we're five and thirteen. Say it again. Five and thirteen. Uh-huh. Five and thirteen. Mm-hmm. AK. Five and thirteen, buddy. Um, I I just think it's funny. I think it's funny because it's like it doesn't matter which way you slice the apple. It's a rotten fucking apple. Yeah. Stop slicing it. <laughs> Maybe throw it in the trash. Toss it away. Get a new one. Maybe go and get some fresh apples. Yeah. Because wow. They're on sale. Well, I like. I remarked to you guys. I was like, "Wow, they both have ten assists in the first quarter." Yeah, they only had twenty in the whole game on Friday. Yeah, guess yeah. what? They finished with twenty-one <laughs> in tonight's game. <laughs> it's the same broken shit. No, and no, I, no. I, I am waffling between being aggravated by it, mm-hmm. but in all honesty, laughing at how hilarious of an epic failure it is. Because guess what? We don't have to wear this failure. Yeah. Bulls fans, y'all don't have to wear this failure. I mean, you have to live with it. Because you're sick in the head like us and refuse to quit this team. That's why we're here. But you, we don't have to live with it being our fault. It's true. Other people got to live with that. And I think it's funny. Because I don't know if they're in denial or just panicking behind the scenes trying to figure out what the hell to do next. Because they also know that this shit is broken and that these apples are rotten. I'm, I'm bordering on like maniacal laughing joker. <laughs> I think every epic failure of a loss that this team plays out is funny now because mm. sometimes you have to laugh to keep from crying, y'all. I'm, li- I'm liking the rotten apples analogy. That's, yeah, it was that's good, good, right? That's good stuff. It's good. Uh, hey, tell me the three-point stat again that you told me when I was over there. Tell oh. me the three-point stat one more time. <laughs> Th- that that's one? one? Yeah, it's a That one's fun because <laughs> uh, I, th- I think – and shout-out to our boys. we got some guests of honor, including uh, Goat's, uh, Goat's brother here hanging out oh. with us at CSGO Studio. Brother Goat. We were chatting with them. But like, uh, the original Goat. Where's the quaff? Like, how where's do you your quaff? <laughs> where's your, your quaff? My Yeah. It's, it's actually recently cut. Recently cut? You, how dare you? You cut that? I don't have a this magnificence? Oh, man. That must have hurt your feelings, bro. <laughs> so we got to like, like you. All right. With all, all right. these what made threes, <laughs> how is it that Brooklyn doesn't have more point total points than they do? Because mm. guess what? The Bulls ended up making just 12 threes tonight after yeah. hitting eight in the first. Yeah. They had 12 three-point makes. Uh-huh. They had 28 made field goals inside the three-point line. Uh-huh. So 12 threes, 28 twos. The Brooklyn Nets made 25 threes and had only 16 made field goals inside the three-point line. They had more made threes than made twos. It's a new, fun, hilarious way to lose. Oh, and only had like seven, seven of those makes came at the rim, meaning they're Ooh. hitting a lot of like mid range, but they would just, they weren't getting into the paint at all. So seven out of the 16. Wow. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah. It's just like a crazy way to play basketball. Yeah. Seriously. Because like when the Bulls are trying to like generate more threes, the way they're trying to do it is like drive and kick. Right, they want to put pressure on the rim, force help to come over, and then spray it out and get corner threes. Those are the valuable ones. But the Nets were taking above the break threes. Mm-hmm. They took uh, forty-two non-corner threes. Forty-two of their fifty-three threes came above the break. That's just like pull-up jumpers. That's off the dribble jumpers. Th- those are tough shots, and they were just making them. Yeah. Lonnie Walker, twenty points. Oh. Royce O'Neal, twenty-two points. I mean, these guys, and like they didn't even have Cam Thomas, who's right. really their their chucker. Correct. Uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, twenty-four points. Mm-hmm. Russ O'Neal, 20. Lonnie Walker, 6 of 10 on threes. Mm. Just, they were just chucking. Season high, too, of, of three-pointers made for them as well. Yeah, just ridiculous, man. Honestly, ridiculous. We're all just sitting here kind of speechless. Like, right honest, but it was really ridiculous to sit and watch because the threes they were making, like you said, they were just chucking them up. And, I mean, they were just pulling up from anywhere. You know, even if they weren't pulling up from anywhere, they were just doing simple execution. You, you know how, what, like, when you watch Toronto play the Bulls, and you just tell they're just out executing them, you know, just by the movements and everything. This was simple, regular execution of you double team me. I'm just gonna swing the basketball. Yeah, that's all this that is, was. Uh, they be I feel like, like pulling this, up out of their dribble handoffs. This yeah. four game losing streak has been largely about the Bulls' defense playing like ass. Mm. 
I mm. mean, like, you know, they, they have their issues on the offensive end too, but sure. like, yeah, you, your opponent took 53 threes tonight. <laughs> you let them hit half of them. <laughs> but like, that's also part of the Bulls defensive recipe. It's the less you take those. They, they want to give you those shots because they're hard. Mm-hmm. They want to contest them, but what they want to take away is shots at the rim, fouls, free throw line, and corner threes. That's like the trifecta. And so they, that's like one of those things where you just tip your cap because those are kind of bad shots. Mm. I mean, you, you got to take some of them. But like literally teams like do their little three-man dribble weave action to get into a pick and roll on the side. Mm-hmm. And they just be pulling out of it. Yeah. It was wild. Yeah, the baseline ones were just really epic because all of them were hitting them, man. It was, it was something to behold. It really was. Dan Whitty was pulling up from the logo. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was absurd. Dude, Royce O'Neal was pulling up from the logo. It's truly absurd. It was nuts, dog. It really was just sitting nuts to sit there and watch. Their coach was pulling up from the logo. Oh, <laughs> Jock Vaughn got in there real quick, got a couple. Sarah Kustak got out there. She was oh, two for three. Dude, no one can guard Kustak. She was two for three. Did, did you see uh, she took a picture with uh, Mark and Stacey before the game on the court? She Love to see that. She didn't have her glasses on, though. She had some gold rim glasses, man, to match the outfit she had. She is always fly, dog. Girls got style, man. My God. I mean, always fly. Always looking good. Ridiculous. You're better or on par or not quite the level of Kendall Gill. Oh, that's always a looking, great Always question. looking good. That is a great question. I'm going to give it to her, honestly. Yeah. Because the way she accessorizes everything, you know what I mean? Like, the, her accessories is really what sets it off. Kendall is just sharp. You know what I mean? He's really sharp in how he dresses and puts it together. And Jason Goff, too. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to sell him short either. He's also very, King very of sharp. the turtleneck. Oh, my God, man. Always looking like a supervillain. Like, he's just <laughs> always super clean, dog. Like, just how it is. But, man, but Sarah Kustak, man, listen, for real. Like, go look at some of the outfits she has put together. Style, all right? Plenty of style. She is fly all the time, man. She wins. Absolutely. Uh, I, like, I like this comment from Brian Ramis in the comments. Just sums it up very beautifully and succinctly. <laughs> Bulls team is shitty. <laughs> I mean, when you're 5 and 13, yeah. I think that's shitty. Yeah. That, that, that qualifies, or as you say, say man, poopy. It, it, it qualifies for, for definitely that. It does. Yo, <laughs> look at Joey. Yo. <laughs> Joey. Joey. Damn, he's quick. He's <laughs> a fool. He quick on the draw, Joe. Uh, quick on the draw. I, you know, I was thinking back to our original episodes. That was sort of my thing. I'd make the quick graphics. I got to go back to it. It's the Y'all only, the it's the only thing. Why well, well, go away from easy shots, man? It's the only <laughs> thing I've, that we've got <laughs> It's, it's all we've got is Joey. It's all I've got. Again, it's all I'm trying to, to do everything I can to, to to try and bring some joy to these poor fans. <laughs> yeah. Any <laughs> smile that we could possibly muster. I don't we, know. I mean, we got Debbie Debo in the comments asking for a tankathon. Uh, we you know which we could maybe do again later yeah, tonight sure, uh, at the end of post game. Um, but you know, still plenty more to talk about. I do want to touch on Vooch because I see a lot of people in the comments talking about Vooch. Want to touch on Zach because his back and forth performances and on this road trip have been wild. And uh, I, I know obviously people in the comments talking about Billy too, so we can uh, we can get to that and more of y'all's comments. Uh, <laughs> oh man, man, people are wilding on Billy yeah. Donovan, man. They're not happy. They're wild, and I know who that is from nothing but you know who that is talking crazy, man. What up, Briscoe? What's up, Briscoe? <laughs> What up, What's up, buddy? You know that. Uh, take a quick break with some ads. Come back. Keep diving into tonight's game and more of y'all's thoughts out there at Bulls Nation. While we're sharing these words, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up button if you're watching along on YouTube. Make sure you are subscribed to CHGO Sports YouTube channel Gambless. so that you can get an alert and know every time the quaff goes live. Fresh. Fresh. Beer. Beer. Can I talk about it? Please. Can oh. I drink it while you talk oh, about please, it? please, Matt. Have yourself a sip. <laughs> And if you're of age out there, have yourself one as well. Joy, where's your, where's the juicy? On point. I'm going to let that go. But hit me with the sound then, Joe. Ah, ah, one okay. more time because Will's people are here. Okay. Ah, ah. And one more time because <laughs> Bulls fans are sad. Ah, ah. Goose Island Beer Company. CAGO is supported by them. We've been Chicago's beer since the Jordan year. That is 1988. Of course, they got the 312 Weedell, the full pocket Pilsner that Matt and I enjoy and run through. We got we to gotta restock the fridge. We do have to restock. We, I, w- I went in there before to come up here, and I was like, God darn. And I thought about getting a warm one, but I said, nah. I'll just go with one. That was the sign. Just get so yourself I'm, one. I should have restocked it. No, it's not your fault. Not okay. your fault, man. They're, they're meant to be drunk, man. That's what they in there for. 
and the Beer Hug family. As we told you, Joey loves the juicy one. But of course, Joey's favorite time of all time is daylight savings time. He raves about it. He loves it. He needs to talk about it all, just all the time. He loves daylight savings time. And since it's that time of the season, it's time for Oktoberfest beer. Get you some of that. You don't have to just drink it in October, November, December, January, whenever. Enjoy that, man, because it is the season for Oktoberfest brew. So grab you the Ultra Fresh exclusive beer at the Goose Island Original Brew House on Clybourne Avenue in Lincoln Park or from that tap room on Fulton Street in West Town. It's the Goose Island Beer Company. It's Chicago's beer, the true taste of Chicago. Tonight's CSGO Bulls postgame also brought to you by Factor Meal Kits. Y'all, if you have not tried Factor yet, you are missing out. I highly recommend you do so. It's true. Because their delivery system is fast and efficient, super easy, and the meals are delicious. Mm -hmm. This holiday season, you might be looking for nutritious, convenient meals to keep you energized on those jam-packed days. Work life, family life, social life. Whatever you need to take care of, sometimes you don't want to be thinking too much and spending too much time with your meal prep in the week. Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal delivery service, can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, and dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. You'll save time, you'll eat well, you'll stay on track with your healthy lifestyle while tackling all of your holiday to-do list. And it doesn't matter what your diet, they offer various specifications and subcategories of their uh, meal offerings. If you're doing calorie counting, if you're doing the keto diet, if you're vegetarian or vegan, parentheses, I'm sorry for you, make better life choices, but they have those choices for you. Uh, Or if you're a protein lover like me, man. man, those offerings are darn good too. Get Factor, enjoy eating well without the hassle. Simply choose your meals and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered to your door. They are ready in just two minutes in your microwave. No prep, no mess, basically no cleanup. Yeah. Um, I've been, so I got my most recent Factor delivery okay. this past uh, couple weeks, and I've been bringing some into, uh, to, into the office for dinner or mm-hmm. we're doing our game nights. I just had the, uh, like, Spicy pepper, like sage pork chop one Ooh, with a side of delicious broccoli. Yeah, I wait, eat broccoli wait, wait, sometimes. A side of what? Broccoli. The pork <laughs> chop came with it. I mean, I'm just happy you had something green with you, sir. Keep going. It was delicious. Uh, yes, it is. Uh, some of the chicken pasta dishes that I've had of theirs that are absolutely delicious. Everything I've tried it's from right Factor, now. incredible. Mm. Head to factormeals.com slash... CHGO Bulls 50 to try it for yourself while getting 50% discount. Mm -hmm. Use promo code CHGO Bulls 50 when you go to factormeals.com slash CHGO Bulls 50. Same with the slash on the website. Same is the promo code. 50% off Mm. your first delivery from Factor Meal Kits. It's delicious. Mm. I'm eating them like crazy. Mm -hmm. Get them cheap. Get them. It's delicious. Hey, I need I need to do something real quick. Some more maintenance here. I'm seeing in the comments. I'm seeing that that dude's name. I'm seeing that ball head. Oh, I've seen name plenty. I've seen plenty. Up. You came prepared. You Joe, know what? I need you to put the camera on me, Joe. No, no, Joe. I got this one. Put the, put it on me, cause I'm ready. I'm ready for them, man. Focus in. I need y'all to focus in. Everybody who keeps typing that, look at me right here. All right, just get it right here. Just just look straight ahead. All right. There you go. Oh, doesn't that feel better? Oh yes, thank you, Joey. Public service. Some some swamp gas. What were we talking about? Off of Venus. What Look, were we talking about? Okay. But, well, if, we, if, I think we were to, talking about we have three hundred. If you need to do it again, if you need to do it again, fine, you can do it again. But mm-hmm. just to clarify, and people listening to the pod or whatever, the name he's referring to is. Jim Boylan, mm. former Bulls head coach. Now we have to do it again. Joke of a coach, Ball, a Jim minute. Boylan. Bulls fans, I know a lot of y'all are frustrated with Billy Donovan right now. I, I'm frustrated too. I said a week ago after their umpteenth embarrassing loss that, that, that he needs to go. I still believe that. Anyone out there who has the audacity to claim, and not in a joking manner, that Billy Donovan is a worse head coach than Jim Boylan, get the fuck off my set, all right? Get, wake up. Please come back and join us in reality because I don't know what the hell you're looking at. 
That man was not just a joke of a coach. He was an offensive joke of a coach. Mm. How quickly we forget that we had to tolerate that idiot of a man who somehow <laughs> continued to fail his way upwards to becoming an NBA head coach. Stop it. Billy has his flaws. But stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Jim Boylan can go straight to hell. <laughs> oh. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you all. All right. Are we back now? All right. Hey, I was going to say, um, I, well, I forgot what I was going to say because you neuralized me, but we, got, <laughs> we have 380 people watching. Let's go. And Bulls have lost seven of the last eight games. We've got 380 people watching, which is awesome in and of itself. I love Get that. the likes up. Hit the like button. It takes maybe a second and a half. Subscribe. Tell your friends. And I will let you guys continue the show. Mm. Thank I, you, dig I dig it. I dig it. He's very kind. But okay, so now, now we got that out of the way. Yeah. I, genuinely curious, Will, what do you think about the game that Billy coached tonight? Because we saw Brooklyn make some defensive adjustments. Mm. There was that hilarious sequence when the Bulls were watching their lead slip away in the second <laughs> quarter. But Billy calls a timeout when they get it down to, I think, nine. Oh, I know the one. And then it's an immediate turnover. And then... Uh, a defensive missed assignment on the other end, an, another quick three, and it was two timeouts in the span of what, 15 seconds yes. from Billy? Yes, it was. It was five seconds, actually. Oh, shit. Okay. It was, wow. It was timeout. The Nets go on like a nine to one run to start the second quarter. Timeout. Uh, inbounds pass. Io dribbles it up, throws it to Tory Craig, mm -hmm. and it bounces out of bounds. Correct. Nets ball. Out of bounds. The Bulls are like standing around complaining, looking pissed off, and they inbounds to Cam Johnson and he just runs up the court and puts it in. Billy Donovan, another timeout. Five seconds. And you asked about like Billy's adjustments. I think Billy can be better. I think he could he would be the first to tell you that he can always be better. Um but when you see that kind of like attitude and behavior mm. on the court, it's hard to really put too much of that on the coach. Like I do think there is a responsibility for the coach to like command the respect from the players, at least enough to them for them to like run the system. And I don't think the bulls are doing that. Like they, mm -hmm. you watch them just go through the motions. They run, they Billy will draw up a nice after timeout play. They'll walk through the motions, not get anything and then just give it to DeMar. Yeah. And that happens so much. Like they'll get really good ball movement. They're going to drive. They'll kick it out, swing, swing to the corner the closeout is just like uh, a little bit early and the guy doesn't feel comfortable, swings it back to DeMar and now it's in isolation. And like so much of that is the, uh, the guys, the players reading the game and processing things, they need to process things more quickly. They mm. need to make those decisions faster. And Billy said that before and I think it's true. To me, that's like, that's a knock on the players way more than it is a knock on the coach. And I think at a certain point, Everybody gets peace, as we say on the show every night now, because they keep losing games. Um, and Billy's obviously a huge part of that. But when you watch these guys walk through the motions, when you watch them hit eight threes in the first, out of their first 10 shots, things are looking good. The ball's moving. Patrick's feeling good because he just made four threes. Kobe hits four threes. Mm -hmm. Like These guys are playing the right way, and then they miss two or three, and now it's a completely different style. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how can you blame Billy Donovan for that? I think you, the coach has to be, maybe people are looking for like more of a, an authoritarian coach. Correct. Uh, where he's like, you know, hounding guys and telling like, put them on the bench if they're not doing what he wants them to do. Correct. Like the Bulls don't have the, the talent to be able to step in and replace those guys if they're not doing the right thing. And I think this is an organizational thing from, you know, Garden Packs when they were here to now AK from Hoiberg to Boylan to now Billy, like they have not held the players accountable. Mm -hmm. I think that's an organizational thing. Obviously, Billy's a part of that. But like, when has Zach Levine ever been told you can't do that or you got to play a certain way? Mm -hmm. It's Zach Levine looks angry because the Bulls are losing and now just gives Zach the ball and let him do what he thinks is best because he's the most talented player on the team. And that's how you end up with losses. I disagree with some of that. Same. Go ahead. It's part of that of what you said when I'm sitting here listening, I'm like, well, part of that is what the coach is supposed to do. 
Um, that's that's what I'm saying. The, but their pieces. Yeah, pieces. that's what I mean. Like some of them is things you. I'm like, but part of that is what he has to do. When you got to the talent part, and you're like, there just isn't enough talent. My thing, if the first thing I thought was, dude, this team is five and thirteen. Put Matt in if it works. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care. Like, put someone else in. Put like, in, coach. Like, Julian Ready Phillips. To play. Anybody. You have – they they have shown you they haven't responded to that style of laid back, chill, relax. They want to be coached harder. It feels like it, right? <laughs> Lead me when I'm in the mood to, <laughs> to be, be led. led. Correct. When they had their practice – Prepare the child for the run. Oh, <laughs> oh Joe, Will, why are you yes! doing this? Why are you doing this, Will? Why are you doing it? Get, get in here. I'm get in here. Get, get in though. here. Get you some of that. What's wrong with you? How dare We're you? We're really <laughs> regressing. This was like a first month of CHP. <laughs> <I think. laughs> what if, um, but they talked about yesterday in practice that it was the most animated they have seen Billy. Casey Johnson talked about this. It was the most animated he had seen Billy. Not angry. But just animate it. You know what I mean? Just really in them, you know, really showing them what they need to do. And I think that's part of the reason they came out how they kind of came out in that first quarter. Now, the other part of that, you're right. They just regress back into their old kind of ways and how to do things once they got adversity. That's not on him. That's on them, for sure. I'm not taking that away. My thing is, when you're sitting there watching that, and even in that second quarter, when you saw the bench clearly didn't have it, I'm saying words that in my head that I thought I'd never say. Like, Put Patrick Williams back in the game. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sitting here saying these things because I'm watching how bad it's going. You got to stop the bleeding. You know, you have you control those things. Who's out there on the floor is still under your control. Like, if they're not playing well, fine. I will find somebody else who does. Like, that has to be the mindset, especially when you're 5 and 13. You can't keep doing the same shit and expect that to be a different result. And after players and the coach, you can't keep doing it. The players are doing the same crap, and you're seeing what they're getting. But I think Billy's doing the same stuff, and, and you see what getting. Now he tried with him being animated and those things like that. But you have to go further. For me, you gotta are, go a little deeper. You talking about different stuff with his demeanor, like you just mentioned, or are you talking about different stuff with his systems that he's running out there, his rotations? Because he's also changed some of that. Yeah, he has. He is Billy's some of that. trying different things for he's, the. Look, okay, yeah. I understand there's a faction of Bulls fans who don't like Billy because they don't think he's a good access nose coach. And, you know, he just sits there chewing gum all the time. That's literally all he does. He chews his gum. He does the coach. Sell. He chews his gum. Enough with the gum complaint. Let the man chew gum if he wants to chew gum. He didn't gum. chew any gum tonight. Who cares? <laughs> they do. Um, <laughs> what, I, what I don't like is the Billy never makes any adjustments yeah. claim. Yeah, I hate that claim. Because it's just flatly wrong. It's not true. It's flatly wrong. He's changing up the starting lineup. He's changing up the rotation. Yeah. He's changing who plays with who. They have changed their shot profile. They're just mm -hmm. not making their shots. I just talked about how he changed like, his demeanor yesterday in practice. Like, yeah. He yanked he Io the second we – that five-second play where mm -hmm. they – uh, they came out of the timeout. Like he's there's stuff he's trying to do, mm -hmm. but there's only so much you can do right. with this roster. And I think a lot of times this team has been down twenty, and mm -hmm. it's like just the rotations are out the window. Give me Julian Phillips. Like let's try to get some energy out there. But when you're up seven and this is happening, it's hard to put in your thirteenth, twelfth man mm -hmm. to try to like preserve a lead. Mm -hmm. I just think that's like a that's a hard position to be in. No, so I, I, no I said put Patrick back in. That's what you yeah. do. You put the guys in who were cooking. And handling business, you put them back in the game. You don't continue to have the guys out there getting their ass whooped. Here's here's the thing, though. So, in in that sense, that that was me partially defending Billy, because mm. um, you know I saw I think it was Jamie Andy, one of our our, our loudest uh, Billy haters in the comments, you know, saying like we're just up here, you know, giving Billy a pass. No, mm -mm. I literally called for the man to be fired a week ago. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. Um, but so that's. To me, the problem where even if I do not think Billy is the biggest problem, which I still don't, I don't either. I still think he is a coach who has his flaws. And what I can't forgive, I don't care if you are working with a broken roster. What I cannot forgive, and some of it's on the players, but some of it is absolutely on the coach. By winning the first quarter tonight, the Bulls' record in first quarters this season improved to five and thirteen. Their record in complete games is five and thirteen. I'm sorry that that is coaching. You come out and play like ass and lose ninety percent of the first quarters you play. I'm not a mathematician. <laughs> but why do you say that's on the coach more than it is on the players? 
I'm, I, it's on everyone. If that is a continuous problem, whatever it is that Billy is trying to do to get these players ready to play, it's not registering, which I'm not necessarily saying is mostly or entirely Billy's fault. I'm saying it's not registering. So it doesn't matter if it's the players not listening to Billy when he's giving them instructions that are smart, wise, things that might work, or if he's giving them the wrong instructions. Either way, there is a clear disconnect in communication yes. because you come out and every night other than tonight look like trash for the first 12 minutes of every game you play. Can't hit a shot. Offense, half-court offense goes nowhere. Turnovers, bad defense, all of it. That signals coach, players, communication not working. Yeah, and that's the, that's the piece that I put on him the most, to be clear. Like, you have to, as the coach of a team, as the leader of a team, you have to be able to, like, capture everybody's, like, mind and, like, mm -hmm. take them forward. And he yeah. has not been able to do that. Got to have some of that but boil also, and win one for the Gipper attitude. <laughs> but I also think it's a little unfair to just assume that because the slow starts have continued to be a problem, that... Billy hasn't done anything to try to adjust that. I'm not saying you it's, think but, that, but, that, but doesn't that make it even do. crazier? Having tried changing the starting lineup in a variety of so ways. That's my yeah. point. Is like there's only so much you can do with a to use your analogy like a rotten apple to make it into something that works. And again, I'm not saying Billy is without blame. I think he is. I think everybody is. From ownership down to you know Julian Phillips or Dalen Terry. And whoever was cleaning the floor in the well, end-season tournament. And it, even, even what, if your nitpicks as far as their offensive strategy and scheme, in the first quarter tonight, we saw it work. Yeah. For a quarter. And then as Like, soon they as were the, swinging the ball from side to side. They were swinging the ball adversity. through Vooch. Vooch had assists from the low block because he found shooters that he was kicking out to. The ball was moving around. Like, we saw the the theory of how this might work for and then, a quarter, and then they, and then they the still timeout. ended up losing by fucking 20. And then they, t they called the timeout, and Billy said, all right, everything you guys were just doing that mm -hmm. was working, stop doing that. Let's go back to the old way. Like, he's not doing that. That's on the players. Mm. Shout out to Brian Ogle in the comments who says, we need to fire Will G. We Shout need to, to fire, we need who, fire who? who? the hell is Will G? That would be, oh, be me. Who the, yeah. who the hell calls him Will? Man, go out of here, Shout bro. out. <laughs> Here's the good news. Bulls can't fire Will. That's right. <laughs> no, they can I mean, try. No. <laughs> and we never would. No, no. He's going nowhere. There's, well, well, so, I mean, what's, what's your take on that, Dave? Uh, this conversation that Will and I just had based on our, our viewing audience talking about Billy and whether or not, you know. It's, it's, I mean, I see both sides. And, and that's kind of where I am when I, when I talk about Billy and when I speak about him and the team. Like, I'm looking at the product because Will is absolutely correct. You can only do so much with a rotten apple. You're absolutely right. But when you, I look at Billy also, and I see some of the moves that he makes, and I watch some of the things that he does, and, I'm, and it just really confuses me and bothers me sometimes, like, of the moves that he makes. And I get lost, you know, when I sit there and watch him do that. And, again, I get the players. You know, you only do so much with what you're given and what you're handed. But, man, it just really feels like a team has tuned him out. Yeah. You know? And that's a problem. And that, that's a issue. And usually when a team tunes you him. out, that's on the coach. Yeah. You know, when the team doesn't want to listen to you uh, and, and respond to you, that's on. And what makes it even worse, Will, is he is known as a player's coach. Like, that's what he was brought in here as, is a guy that could connect with player on any level. That, that, that's what he was billed as, is that kind of coach. And it doesn't feel like that anymore. It feels like just a guy who's just going through the motions, continually going through the motions, just going through the motions – and guys just aren't listening to it and taking it in and producing it on the floor. Now, some of them just can't produce it on the floor. You know what I mean? Like some of them, you watch the IQ on some of these guys. This, the IQ, y'all know I talk about this a lot. The IQ is low on this team. It is very, very low, which is why another reason we miss Lonzo so damn much. The IQ is truly, truly low. He can't control that. You know what I mean? Those players are who they are. Putting them in certain positions – having certain players in, doing those certain kind of things, and making sure guys aren't tuning you out. And if your style that you're doing isn't working, trying to change it during the game. Now, you watch, he, ch he changed it during practice. Like you say, he took Io out. 
You know what I mean? When those, when those things kind of happen, that has to continue for me. Like, it can't just stop there. Just like the Bulls doing good in the first quarter, it can't just stop there. You can't just stop with that kind of one change because bad shit is going to continue to happen throughout the game, and you got to adjust to that shit. And, again, it's harder when you only got Alice Caruso out there, too. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, that was a big that piece. makes it like, much harder. Tyrone Stevens in the comments said, uh, so is Will Billy's cousin. Dude sat and watched Vooch get torched by the small lineup and did nothing. That's not true. What did Vooch do when they were going small? Instead of switching everything one through four, which is how the Bulls normally play defense, they started switching everything one through five. And what did that result in? That resulted in Vooch guarding Dinwiddie on the yes. perimeter one-on-one on, one on an island. Mm -hmm. And he got away with that. I mean, that, that was the entire third quarter. And a lot of the fourth quarter, they were running those actions. Yeah. So that is an adjustment. And what happened from there? Then when the Bulls reverted back to their switching one through four, there were two communication errors between Vooch and Kobe that resulted in layups in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. Like that's an adjustment and then going back to it. And like the players got to be on top of that. They got to be the ones that like keep track of those things so they don't have those communication errors mm -hmm. and get those stops when they need to. Um, I don't think switching Vooch onto Dinwiddie is a great solve. That's yeah. not like... But again, that's the rotten apple piece. Yes, like no matter right. what you try, there's going to be a problem with it. And when like the solution is, let's bring out the bench, let's bring in Andre Drummond and Io and Javon Carter and Torrey Craig, uh -huh. those guys will win us games. That's not a solution. <laughs> and again, like I'm going to say it every single time we talk about this, like sure. Billy is still, is not without fault. The fact that he has not been able to galvanize this group and get them to buy in for more than like eight minutes and a quarter is a problem that he, that is on him, that he needs to solve. But there's only so much you can do when your roster can only play a certain way, when the guys are unwilling or unable to make quick reads, um, when they can't shoot over a zone, when they can't play out of the middle, when they're passing it to Vooch in the middle and it's hitting his kneecaps. They're, like, what can Billy do about that? I've, I've seen so many bounce passes bounce off of guys' shins yeah, and knees yeah. in the last two weeks. It's been weird. It's hilarious. It's been really weird. Are you, are you surprised or upset or any of those kind of feelings that the Bulls haven't even tried a small ball lineup? Um, I think this is the kind of team where it would work, where you can go small – uh, yeah, they because they're they, playing Dorian, wasn't out. They're like, playing Dorian Finney-Smith out right, there. Correct. Uh, at the five, you could have tried something with Torrey Craig and Patrick Williams. Torrey Craig did not play well tonight. No. But the other thing is, look, when you are playing really any style, you want you want to be good at it enough to where your opponent has to adjust to you, mm -hmm. and you don't want to just be playing to your opponent's strengths because that's how you get beat. And so, if the Bulls are going to try something out for the first time with, you know. Uh, Craig and Patrick at the 4-5, that's fine, but you're playing into the strengths of the other team. And the other thing is, for all the people that have Your called for... Ain't working either, though. For, for all the people that have called for Drummond to be a starter because they don't like Vooch, so don't now you want to not play him because you want to go small? Like, there's just not a lot of good solutions here. Yeah, I, I want to try anything to help them, you know, get to a victory. Like, I think that's the thing of it for me. I, I want to exhaust it all. You know, try it all. I don't care if it fails, but I don't want to see the same constant thing. Like, yeah. who who has earned the real position out here outside of DeMar and Zach? Who has earned that? You're like, you got to have them out there all the time. They got to be here. No, you have to be at this position. Get the No, no. Anybody can get out there and try. I don't care. If it's not working, I will try anything. I will try anything I got to try to get this victory. I will go small. I will go big. I will put anybody out there, man. Like, give me your brother. I'll throw him out there, bro. Give me Joey. Like, I'm trying anything Buckets. for a couple minutes. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying anything, man, to get this team to a victory. Because, like you said, when you do those things, that's how you get beat when you play down to them. But, again, my thing is not playing down to them, we're still getting our ass whooped. Yeah. You know? So, if this is true, this I see isn't working – then I have to try this because I still don't know. This but is still you, an unknown for But me. if you are a coach that's trying to get his team to buy in to playing a certain style that you all have spent training camp and preseason buying into and trying to basically convince yourself that this, if we play this certain way, mm -hmm. then we have a chance to win games because we have the talent, mm -hmm. right? We have three all-stars on our team. We have, you know, Good new role players Correct. in there. Correct. Got young players who have upside. Like, there's talent on this team to win games. Mm -hmm. 
And so if you spend six weeks of training camp and preseason trying to get everybody to buy into this new style, and then you just say, out the window, we got to go small today because it's not working. Yeah. Like you, you have to, I think he's also fighting. I agree with you to a certain extent, but he's also fighting just scrapping everything and like making everybody start from scratch on a day-to-day -day basis. And I don't think that long-term is a solution either. But again, I don't either. But within the term, within that short term of actual game of what's going on, for me, that's also an issue I have. Talk to me about what's happening right then and there at that time of the game. This isn't working. This isn't working. This isn't working. Let me just try this and see if it goes. If it doesn't go, fine. We can go back. I'm not saying blow everything up and scrap it all and this is what we're going to play, you I know, am. from now on. <laughs> well, yeah, that's a different monster. But I'm talking about the styles, you know. I'm not saying scrap that and just forget all that. I'm talking about within the game, if I see something clear and working and we're getting our ass whooped, not beat, our ass whooped, continuing to do it one way, I'm going to try another way. You know what I mean? Just to see. I have, I have to see it fail. That's the kind of person I am. I've got to see it fail first before I could be like, okay, this just ain't going to Even when you saw it succeed for the first 10 minutes of the game? Yeah, I saw it. Get, that's why I said get Patrick ass back in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's get him the back kind in. of thing that, where I totally agree. Like, I think you are a big proponent of, like, ride the hot hand. Yeah, yeah. And I, if you cook, I agree. Like, you should. Keep bringing it out. If somebody's baby, cold tasty. and they're on the court, get them out for somebody that was shooting the ball well. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we got to take our second break. But just uh -huh. a few other interesting comments. And look, I know Bulls fans are heated and feel differently and feel passionately about everything about this team, but I, especially the guy in the head coaching chair right now. My, my only issue that I'll ever have with fans, like, I, you know, I was joking about it with our guy Briscoe from Nothing But Bull on Twitter the other night. Like, I clearly do not see the Billy problem the way you see it, but I respect it because I know that it comes from a Bulls fan who's passionate. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, Nothing But Bull, if that is Briscoe uh, in the comments just said, you know, you can only do so much with what you're handed, which is what some of us were saying about Billy and the roster construction problem. Yeah. But we witnessed Tibbs getting the Bulls the best record in the league when D. Rose was out a whole year. And then uh, a few comments down later, Paul Williams saying, when was the last time you saw a head coach get an extension with a losing record? If you're going to make complaints, joining a debate about a team that you care about, that is feeling like you feel like they're letting you down right now, come with facts. That's all I ask. Come with facts. Because the Bulls did not have the best record in the league when Derrick Rose missed that season. They didn't. They had the best record in 2010-11 when he was the MVP. And then they had the best record in the East again, the lockout shortened season following when Derrick, yes, missed some games here and there, nursing a variety of injuries before ultimately tearing his ACL in the playoffs in game one. But Derrick Rose was out there. Yeah. Then Derrick Rose got hurt and missed a whole season. And then he came back for 10 games and then missed basically an entire additional season after that. Neither of which do the Bulls have the best record in the NBA. If you're making arguments, base them in fact. Billy Donovan did not get an extension after the Bulls had a losing season. He got an extension after they went 46 and 36 and went back to the playoffs for the first time in five years. Just bring your facts, please. Bring your facts! Bring your car facts, too. And and again, that being said, that, that's, not, that's not me defending Billy Donovan. That's me defending truth. And facts. Because I love you. Get you some of that right there. And also, Tibbs players were bought in. Like, that was a system that was already in place. You know what I mean? Going on. So, when that happened, it was kind of easy to keep moving. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop Joey's it, Joey. Clowning, man. Yeah, he is. <laughs> sold in packs of how many, Joe? So, it sold in packs of two, not three. <laughs> and it has been approved for in game chewing. <laughs> oh, man. Secretly extended taste. Wow. Joey's on one tonight. But <laughs> you caught that? You, you caught That's that one? not. I just. I'm just trying to be goofy. That's not even a. You mean who you are, sir? Like, we love uh, every second of it. It's like the opposite of uh, fruit stripe gum, which right. is very evidently dies immediately. Taste. Yeah, so not secretly you put it No, no, no. <laughs> on, the, on the bottom, it also says, "Please wait 0.75 quarters for taste to <laughs> God, man. Joey, man. man. Joseph, okay, we got we got to take one more ad break. Snacks. Then we'll come back get to more of y'all's thoughts. Joey graphics. Uh, <laughs> out here tonight. <laughs> Big Dave, tell them about Oh man, dude, you know get what? The thumbs up button. Joey wants us to get to two hundred yeah, to do a Joey some spin. thumbs up for them graphics. Give right Joey. There, man. 
<laughs> I mean, that man up. All right, Joey, multitask. Give him, give him. Deserve that. some love. Oh man, you know when when you're having uh, these debates and these discussions, you know it's a good way to get your stress out. But then you walk out and you're still fired up. You know you got to get it out, y'all. You can't keep it in. You got to get it out. So what you go do? You go to the gym, and the one that you should check out, not just the gym, the mid. Town Athletic Club. You should hit this place. It is amazing. Right now, this is the talk of CHGO. Everybody who work with and talk to here is talking about Midtown Athletic Club and just how amazing it is, y'all. Four awesome locations: one in Palatine, Bannockburn, Willow Brook, and the Midtown Athletic Club and Hotel in the middle of Bucktown and Lincoln Park. It is Matt Peck's sister approved. Yes, yes, and of course, the Midtown Palatine has launched. Multi-million dollar transformation of the club Which will be complete in early 2024 Just in time to get started on your New Year's resolution Of getting yourself right and getting yourself tight They got something at the club for everybody Single people, right here Families with kids Anybody got kids? Uh, if you got them Sorry, man, well, I ain't curse that you know I mean? <laughs> People looking for lifestyle changes And holistic wellness they have over 100 courses, man, over 100 classes that you all can join. Yoga, boxing, spin and cycling, cross training, group exercise, high intensity interval training. And they don't just have gym quality. No, 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 no. These are boutique quality spaces. Smooth. The best tennis courts out there, y'all. Indoor and outdoor. Pickleball, paddle tennis, USTA, professional quality all the way they got it all head over to midtown to midtown.com slash chgo that's midtown.com slash chgo find out more and to tour the midtown athletic club nearest you midtown athletic club sweat it out tonight's chgo bulls post game also brought to you by ray chrysler dodge ray ram you in the market for a new vehicle? A lot of people are around the holidays looking for some savings on those holiday uh, dealership uh, deals. If you are, we've got great news because we just teamed up with Ray Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram in Fox Lake. Even had a CHO Bear Show out there uh, last week. Said they sold two cars when they went out there. Baby. There you go. Mm-hmm. And right now, during the Black Friday sales event at Ray CDJR in Fox Lake, 0% financing. What? Boom. Now available on select new models all month long but that's not all just for listening to us here at chgo bulls you can get a free oil change when you mention chgo at the service center or mention chgo when you book online at ray cd jr slash services (laughs) so if you're in the market for a new vehicle you've got to check out the team at ray chrysler dodge jeep and ram because they're the only team we recommend visit them today route 12 in fox lake for more information, visit Ray CDJR in Fox Lake or RayCDJR.com. Serving the community since 1963. Mm. Blowing out a candle? No, you know, you're three, you know that's my three-point celebration. Man. Oh, I got you. Joey, don't you have a three-point celebration? I was about to say, let's see it. <laughs> was it that was like a combination of Rolos like stirring the tea. Yeah, stirring it and what well, you saying is tasty? So the chef's kiss for the three. Okay, I got you. All right. Uh, uh, David Thomas in the comments said the Bulls need an oil change. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> amongst other things, yes. They need some things. Uh, ooh. Henjo, meanwhile, saying, I bet my life savings on this game. Ryan Storff owes me a new house. <laughs> if you, I mean, I, I hope you're, uh, yeah, I hope you're exaggerating yeah. when you say you bet your house on this game. If you bet your house on this game, or even a large sum of money on this game, in that you bet the Bulls to win it, that's on you. A Bulls Nets game though. I I mean I I'm a little cranky about losing my automatic bet. A little bit. Where the Bulls lose the first quarter by plenty of points. A little bit. A little bit. My hot streak ended. <laughs> How dare you, Bulls? How dare you score 36 points in the first quarter? Dare your competency. I got holiday gifts to buy. <laughs> oh, I forgot. I almost forgot. Watch party, sir. Watch party. Watch party's coming up. Tuesday. 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 We're going to be in the place. At what? What is Joey? Joey, what is it going to be? 
wangs and rangs. You like that one? For those of you who speak English, <laughs> roll with that. it's wings and rings. Uh, 3434 South Halstead, right here in Chicago. Starting at 6.30, we will hang out. We will drink some Goose Island. Yes, we will. We will watch the Bulls. Yes, we will. Maybe they won't give up a franchise high number of three-point makes on Tuesday like they did tonight. Either way, we'll be there hanging out. We want you to come hang out with us. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to do a live post game from uh, Wings and Rings yes. after the game's over. Going to be a good time. Uh, you don't need to get a ticket or anything. Nope. It's a free event to attend. Just come show up. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Whoever's in town. Mm -hmm. Hang out with us. Wings and Rings on South Halstead. Uh, Bulls Celtics. He'll be there. Classic. I'll be there. That'll go well. Call for be there. The <laughs> Spathers will be there. We'll all be in the place to be. So come, you know, cry, hug. What's it called? Again, therapy Joey? sessions. That's what we do. It's called Wangs and Rangs, aka Wings and Rings. And I did put the link to the sign up in the chat. There you go. Yeah, you can RSVP if you like, just to let us know that you're coming. Yeah, let's know you're on the way, man. So we can get all excited about so it. Yeah, happy that we're going to see you. So I know how many hugs here's the I'm thing. getting out. But the Bulls are 5 and 13. That's a shitty reality. It yeah, sucks. Yeah. None of us are happy about that. No. Doesn't mean we can't have fun hanging out together as Bulls fans. That's a fact. You want to jaw your mouth off and talk about how this Bulls team's letting us down? Come do it with us. Yeah. You disagree with any of us on our takes about Billy Donovan or anything else? Come talk to us. Let's have a chat. Mm. While we drink some Goose Island. Eat, mm. some, eat some wangs. Some and rangs. And rangs. <laughs> Get both. I love. Two for one. Both of those things. Will, do you prefer wangs or rangs? Uh, give me some rangs. I'm some trying rangs? to get number seven. Mm. You know what? Well done. Well done, sir. That was a solid job right there. That's a smart young man. Give me the rangs, too. You know, I'm I want to see one of them as a <laughs> person who can comprehend what it means. <laughs> The youth. The, the, the poor youth. The youth. The poor youth the of youth. Bulls fandom. All the stories I have for you, Will. <laughs> oh, the magical times, my friend. Oh, my God. Must be nice. Oh, it was better than nice. I, I hate to tell wonderful. you. They can tell it, you. It was pretty great. But it was spectacular. Uh, I like Car being on the other side of the hate to tell you. <laughs> Carlos in the comments meanwhile saying, why does Joey keep saying wanks? <laughs> <laughs> the question is, why not? Let it's, how the, it's how the cool kids say wings these days. Is it? Is that how they're doing it? I don't know. No, it's not. You think I know what the cool kids say? <laughs> yeah, man. Do you recall You're our so pre? Hip. Do you recall our pregame show a few nights ago <laughs> when I had you try your best to explain to me what the hell Chet Holmgren said when he yeah. was talking about Kevin Durant pull up threes? I do remember that because it, it was hilarious. Wasn't English. It was hilarious and awesome as. When I do it anytime, I'm telling you these kind of things. Dude, TikTok, and also. TikTok invented its own language, apparently. <laughs> or the TikTok generation did. You just turned I, them out. I don't care for yeah, it. Yeah, that's, that's the point right there. You don't Go to care. school. <laughs> we'll be super chatting or what, Joe? Let's do some super chat. <laughs> All right, here we go. AK says, started strong, then Billy sat down impact starters, effectively taking bowls out of rhythm, giving up 44 in the second quarter. Vooch is slow-footed, got pick-and-rolled to death, followed by a barrage of threes. Oh, defense. yes, because Andre Drummond is so fleet of foot. <laughs> that's his nickname. <laughs> uh, the, I mean, what, what, what do you? What, you're gonna ask Billy to play the starters 48 minutes? Like, what that's are you saying? That's the thing. It's like, yeah. can you? I mean, they played the first 10 minutes of the game. Yeah, but you can't play them 40. I mean, even Pat I, impact starters minutes. being like, I was gonna, how many? How many minutes did Pat play tonight? 34. That Good that is him. a lot. Like that Good might even be a, a season high for Pat. And if that's what you meant by impact starters, not necessarily like the big three, the mid three, whatever, but like the fact that Pat was mm -hmm. playing confidently tonight and knocking down threes. Mm -hmm. and, he played 34 minutes. Mm -hmm. For Patrick Williams, that's like two games worth of minutes. <laughs> that young man was recently relegated to being the 10th man in Billy's rotation. He was. And he played 34 minutes tonight. And he started. His last five games, Patrick started. Billy doesn't make adjustments, though, guys. Doesn't make adjustments. <laughs> he started. He was the 10th man. He was the 6th man. And then he started again. Just all over the place. All over the place. The Five oh, Emperor, P. Will with 20 points. I'm back on the hype train. Hey, hey. let's go. Appreciate you, Fife Emperor. <laughs> good, fifth? good people game. I don't know if it's Fife, Fifth, fifth whatever it is. Uh, let's talk Bulls. Vooch only having six points against a no Claxton and Simmons Nets team is a new level of just laughable ineptitude. I can't ineptitude. take 60 plus more games of this. 
Laughable ineptitude could be the next movie that they do. Oh, part oh, three. Man. That's one of those, like, <laughs> like the Matrix parts two and three, you release them like bang, bang, back to back. Potential downfall. So potential downfall. Yep. And, and then, then laughable ineptitude. Laughable ineptitude. Laughable ineptitude. <laughs> no, Will had one. I can't remember what it was. Will yeah, I remember what Will had another one. Well, like laughable ineptitude could be like the comedy. Yeah, right. That's the best. after after the potential the downfall. <laughs> yeah. Um, Melvin says when Vooch got mad at Pat Bev for holding him accountable on defense last season, that's when I really knew Vooch can't really be for us. Mm. He did get upset. I mean, <clears throat> did get upset at that. That he was did. our last uh, watch party too. Damn, you're right. Was it? Yeah, he's correct. Where Renali's? <sighs> The one no, where the, you mean like the broadcast the caught game. Vooch getting all yeah. cranky with yeah the, at Rinaldi's I thought yeah. mm-hmm. no I mean, uh, PB and J pizza beer jukebox yeah it was a PB and J I guess that was not the last one but it was one but hey guys at least we finished fourteen and nine and went to the playing tournament yay hey. hey. bars top Let's five go, baby banners top five defense. I enjoyed it that's why you win that's why you games. go that's why that's we why play you go that's why you play that's why you go man Ricky. what the hell you here for if you ain't here for that uh, making fun of people. Well, that's true, too. Not y'all, the people who run this team. <laughs> My impersonation of the word continuity for the Bulls organization is clueless, overhyped, naive, tiresome, ignorant, noxious, unacceptable, insufferable, tragic, yucky, hashtag historic loss. That's Thank a you, lot of words. Ricky. <laughs> also, great job on the pronunciation, Joe. Not a single misstep, and those were a lot of syllables. And you know he was yeah. waiting. Well, I was a little confused about noxious. I, I wasn't it was an obnoxious, you it, you but uh, right. you know it's noxious. Um, you know, not my first rodeo. Hey, it's out there, Joe. AK you Bulls a pipe named Noxious Toad back in the day. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are already losing, and so giving the youngster more Phillips, more tick, Matt. That means uh, playing time. Okay. And his you. development should be priority. It will be. Soon enough, it will be. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I am the way. Y'all know, that's where I am. It's 17, 18 games? That's the 18. only thing you're holding on to. I am yeah. a Julian Phillips super fan now. Yeah, it's the only thing he's holding on that's to. That's where I am. <laughs> holding on by a thread. By a thread. Not Sonogo? Don't want to see Sonogo? I like Sure, Sonogo. yeah. I honestly would like to see him play. I, I mean, like, I would like to watch his shoulders get in a fight with, you know, I don't know, who, who's the toughest wrestler these days, Dave? The toughest wrestler? Yeah. Oh, wow. Shout out CM Punk. Oh, uh, the toughest. That's a good question. Whoever it is, Adam Sonogo would kick his ass. I guess Brock Lesnar, I guess. He is a giant man. Yeah, he's, he's pretty huge. He's still wrestling? He is. He's chilling right now. He stepped away for a minute because he's chilling. He comes back when he feels like it. Yeah. But still pretty tough. Yeah. Still pretty intimidating. That's you what the Bulls know. do, too. They just step away. <laughs> <laughs> they try for a little bit, and then they step away. I mean, I saw... <laughs> they come back if they feel like it. Yeah, that, they, that was... was it a, get them wins, though. The All-State <laughs> last night, right? The wrestling yes, thing? Yes, All-State what, what was it called? Like the cages or whatever? Uh, Survivor right? Series War Games. Sure. Amazing. It... Like, I saw the video of CM Punk coming in. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's a name I know. And this is a wrestler. And he's from Chicago. <laughs> and he has this weird backstory that you've told me about that I've since forgotten. But yes, of course. That place... What You were telling me about how they, like, added in more... C- yeah. It was... Hacked. Pandemonium. People going nuts. They lost their minds. Bro. Just roided out dudes and speedos. <laughs> That's the eighties who man. are making up fights <laughs> about made up shit. <laughs> but you know what? It's impressive. It's very impressive. So I'll show you a clip again. The guy stapling, uh, drawing to the man's no, face. You don't want to see that? That, was, that one made that up was for you? Truly oh, yeah? upsetting. No, that's made up. What are you talking about? That was that was all fake. That was really gross. That was fake, man. That was fake re- stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when he drank the blood, I was like, okay, I'm done. I don't, I don't That's what happens when you this. push them to that level. Fake? Come here. Rip blood. That's what happens when you do those things, man. But yes, shout out. How's LA Knight not there? Yeah, I know, Brian. Listen, I was talking about my guy, guy Greg, from um, uh, CHGO Blackhawks earlier today. He and Shout I were having Greg. just an hour-long. Big long, wrestling fan. Yeah, me yeah. and him just had like an hour-long discussion on wrestling. It was the best. It was awesome, man. Shout out to him, dog. I talk wrestling with, it, with all y'all, but y'all know that. I mean, at this point, mm-hmm. you know I've watched some wrestling with you. You have. Will hasn't. Will hasn't I, watched the wrestling I'm not. With you. I still think it's ridiculous. I know I, this. I get the entertainment value. Yes. I think, I think it's, it's basement entertainment, but... 
I get it. Basement can we get 24 more? Can we, hey, can we get 24 more billion. likes? Can we get 24 more likes for 200 likes for us tankathon spin, please? Would you people okay. out there at Bulls Nation, please well, give us some likes. We have 388 of you watching. We have um, 24 more likes. I would rather watch pro wrestling than the Bulls right now. It's not saying much. It's saying well, a lot for it's me. Wrestling. It's ridiculous behavior. When's the last time you watched some wrestling? Never. Never ever. No, I've I've I haven't like sat down to watch a yeah. whole wrestling. In you, a very what do you even call time. it? A whole wrestling event? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Match. Yeah. Big Dave, when was your last uh, desk pop? <laughs> desk pop? You have to. <laughs> oh, you have to watch the other guys, man. Okay, I keep telling you this. Are you, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. I do. Watch I do. the other guys, dog. Uh, CHGO trying to do a wrestling podcast. You know we. We're talking about it. me and Greg are having discussions. Mm-hmm. We're having discussions. Mm-hmm. We're, we're having discussions on it, man. We might. We might uh, do this. Can I give you guys a horrendous stat? Oh shit! Okay, I thought we were done talking about the shitty bulls and just I know. riffing. Will until is never we done talking about it. That's why he's the goat. Please, Will. Through eighteen games, Ugh. this is the Bulls' worst start. I since, already hate it since Fred Hoiberg was coach Ooh. when they started five of nineteen mm. through eighteen games. The, the following year when, when He Who Must Not Be Named yes. was the coach for the full season, they were worse after like 20 games, but they started 6 and 13 or 12 or whatever. So they are worse than even that season. With that, and those teams definitely they had started less talent. 5 and 19 and Fred Hoiberg got fired. Isn't that more upset because those teams had less talent for sure? When Nikola Mirotic was still on the squad. <laughs> oh, your boy. Shout out Nico! Oh man, that does that mean that's you, crazy? <laughs> isn't it more upsetting? Like, because those teams were less talented mm-hmm. and didn't have, as Will said, you know, the all stars that they have, uh, the All NBA guy that they have. They didn't have that, but you have those things on this team, and you're still matching the records of teams that just, you know, had Jake and Kevin and Lawrence as their starting part of their starting five. It was tough. I don't know, man. It's bad, bro. It's bad. It's really bad. And it's really tough. Again, right now. like the we we had a very interesting, nuanced conversation about Billy and how much blame is on his shoulders or should be after another loss, a loss where you cough up a twenty point lead and yeah. end up losing by damn near twenty. Yeah. You you can't bushel of rotten apples. <laughs> Everything. Everything's right. Needs to change. Mm-hmm. Everything. Quit telling us that they aren't rotten. Everything. Every time we cut it open, the air comes out. Like, it's, it's not a thing. <sighs> to sadness. Where you at, Joey, as far I'm as the lights? I'm being a Bulls fan and just become a fully committed wrestling fan. How about that? We're no, at 194. We <laughs> We're so close. Do we have any other Super Chats we need to get to? Or are we good? Um, AK says, AK? where do you see the Bulls finish? 25 to 30 wins. I'm looking at like 15 right now. <laughs> like, for real, uh, though. I mean, have you seen their next nine games? Yo, their schedule coming up is pretty brutal. Let's what? Talk Bulls says, can't Yikes. the Bulls be as good as the CHO Wait, let, we'll, ad reads? Sorry. Well, you. can't that, be done. That would be impossible. Can't be done. <laughs> Hit the next Tuesday game, night bro. at Boston. Mm-hmm. Number one team in the East. Watch party. Back home versus Milwaukee. Awesome. <laughs> at home versus New Orleans. Who's starting to pick things up? They are. Again, at Milwaukee. Denver. At Miami. At Miami. At Philadelphia. First Lakers. That's through December 20th. Ah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we also have one more from uh, Ricky. <laughs> Can the Bulls and Bears clean house in the same offseason, please? That would be nice, Ricky. Oh, man. The Bulls and Bears. Uh, both got a hard reset this off season. Oh, like that would be awesome. Just fresh, his, uh, fresh start. Do fresh we want? Start. Do we want to do a tank spin? We can. Yeah, it's up to you guys. Uh, act, before sure. we do that tank spin, let if me. We give get to two hundred likes. I one like last should. shout out. Yeah, give us six more likes, and we'll do it. To our while, while you guys are getting that like count above two hundred, I'll give y'all a quick shout out to our friends at DraftKings in the NBA. The game can change in an instant. Mm-hmm. Take the Bulls tonight. Mm-hmm. Up by 21. Lose by 19. <laughs> but 
Whatever happens, you know the DraftKings Sportsbook has your back. This week, new customers can score 150 instantly in bonus bets just for betting five bucks on NBA basketball. Win or lose the bet, doesn't matter. Either way, you're getting that 150 in bonus bets just for making the bet in the first place. 150? 150. Damn. It's okay. I'm going to bounce back from my Bulls first quarter loss bet Mm -hmm. that finally ran out of steam tonight. Mm Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll do it again on Tuesday. I like your thinking, sir. Celtics are good. I like your thinking. Watch party. Watch party. (laughs) Come watch with us. Watch me bet on stuff. (laughs) While you bet on stuff. At DraftKings. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code CHGO. Again, new customers get 150 bonus bets instantly just for betting $5 on the NBA. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with that promo code CHGO. The crown is yours. All right. Here we go, Tank. 200 likes. We hit it. We got Let's it. Do it, baby. Here we right. go. So, we are at the Tank Thon Now, last time we did the spin, it turned into 12 because I right, will just do one. We couldn't get Yeah, I think we should just we should do one unless they hit an additional milestone. We'll do one. Okay. okay. But here we okay. go. So, look at All here. Right, We've got there. Bulls here clocking in at 5 and 13. They're currently 6 from hey, the bottom. We moved up to 6. But look at this here. Detroit Out 2 of that and 14. 7 spot. Washington 2 and 14. Mm. And San Antonio 3 and 14. And when you look over here in the last 10, 0 and 10, 1 and 9, 0 and 10. So, although the Bulls are 2 and 8, you know, they still have their work cut out for them uh, to truly get to the bottom. The last but, win that the Pistons had was against, was against the, Bulls. the Bulls. Yeah. Yeah. Here Decisive. We when they started the season 2 and 1. Let's go, baby. Number one pick. Go. There you go. Yeah. Who are you taking you number are. one, Joe? Uh, who are we taking number one? Wemby. Oh, crap. Hey, um, we you know what, Will? Top four I think protected. It, I think it was fate. I was texting Will the highlights of one. It's the fine because we got the number one pick. Castle from UConn. I don't know if he's going he's number one. He's probably not one. top five guy, but he is. I don't know if he's going number one. Okay, number guy. one, I'd say uh, right now is probably Ron Holland. Probably Ron Just Holland. because of size and everything. But okay. I really like Collier for USC. Yeah. I really like this Castle kid on UConn. He does so, like Collier. Sorry, is this red zone? What, are we being evacuated? No, we got the number one pick. What do you mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> the people on the other side of the alley are letting off fireworks yeah. because yeah. they Shirtless saw our Wonder. Tankathon pick. spin. Happens, Shirtless man. Wonder is firework. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Kevin, is that you? <laughs> Seriously, there, there's a lot of fireworks. <laughs> That's right. Number one pick. Go crazy, Chicago. I'm sorry. What? Go is, crazy. Is it the 4th of July? Thanksgiving's not even a fireworks holiday. And it's cold outside. What are we doing here? <laughs> Maybe they have the extra leftover stuff. I don't know. The odds of that happening as soon as we spun. <laughs> for, for, I mean, that's just. That's right. It's a beautiful timing. Stop the man. count. That's right. Did they sell? <laughs> it's beautiful timing. Beautiful Did they timing. sell? <laughs> Isaiah Collier is what Shea Dog is saying. Yeah, man. I'm going to heed dog because I haven't gotten into the draft yet. It's too early in the season for me to focus on. Might have on to it. get into the draft a little early this year, No, nah, I'm going I'm keeping the same time. I'm going to leave that for you and Joey. Everybody's right? saying also, like, let's just say this. Like, everybody's like, oh, it's a weak draft. It's a weak draft, which it, it looks like it People could be. People tell me that, like, All once you every need is it only matters who you pick. Like, who, Correct. It doesn't. Well, I think like, when people say it's player. a weak draft, they just mean there's no Wimby at the right, top. Right, at the top. Yeah, that's I what think, they mean. I think, well, like, the top five are going to be very strong. Right. And then there's a five below that who I think are also going to be good. Basically, and nobody they can really identify just to it's the just nobody's like progress. jumping off the page. But I mean, it changes. Like that year, Lamelo Ball went one. Like he probably would have went like five in the next, or not well, Lamelo Anthony Edwards. Like he might have yeah. went five in the next draft. But mm-hmm. well, just how it works. It doesn't really matter. We'll take what we can get. It's whoever's in that draft class and wherever the Bulls end up picking, they're going to take the guy who, when he's <laughs> down the road in year four, puts up eighteen points, drilling some threes. The Bulls fan base can't believe it. <laughs> what? Patrick scored how many points tonight? Shout out, Patrick. <laughs> hey, Pat, let's do it again. How about that? Again. One more time. Again. That's another hat throw there, Joe. And there's two more hat There throws. we go. That's the over. That's oh. the over. Hey, <laughs> let's go. I mean. Let's go. If we're being honest, they deserved for me to hit the hat throw over tonight. <laughs> How do you have a 21-point lead and then lose by damn near 20? I bet on the over. I was with you. I believe in you. And your anger. (laughs) And your rage. It's always just under the surface. (laughs) Yes, it is. 
It starts at a I, But I, tr- I truly was also amused by it tonight. I think it's funny. It's somewhere between deeply, deeply disturbing. Mm-hmm. Makes me hate my life, mm-hmm. hate myself, mm-hmm. not sleep, mm-hmm. and also laugh. Because you got to laugh. It's one of those games that turns people into supervillains. You know? Because you're, you're done crying. You're done yelling. You're done dealing with that. And then you just kind of snap. And then, like you said, maniacal laughter is the word you use. The phrase you use, maniacal laughter. Even Will just had his when he went over the schedule. They said, gee, and then just the laughter that came out of him, that is how villains are created. I mean, I, I tweeted out the schedule dating back to that Detroit, when they beat Detroit. That started a run of five games in seven days. And I tweeted out the schedule from that until that Lakers game that I just posted. And I said, this is going to be a brutal stretch. And people were like, they got the Pistons and like the Magic twice and the Heat who were like mm-hmm. under 500 at that time. And I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they I, do. Say it. I did, I did so notice say it. that yeah. you, uh, you gave a little hate to tell you. I keep quote the receipts. Tweet, bringing I keep that the receipts. Up. Yeah. I, I keep the receipts. Uh, we are out of time. Trademark. Thank you all for hanging out with us on a Sunday night. Hope you all had a great uh, holiday weekend, enjoying time with family yeah, or without really. family if you prefer it that way. Um, either way, we enjoyed hanging out, hanging out with you all on Friday again tonight. Uh, Monday is tomorrow. Will and Marque have a fresh Bulls HQ for y'all? HQ. Coming in five, hot. HQ! 5.30 five, five Central Time. Let's go. Fresh HQ with the GOAT and Marque. We might just burn it all down. I support that. Uh, and then Tuesday, we will be hanging out at Wings and Rings for Bulls Celtics Wings. and post-game live following. Come hang out with us. You can find the information uh, on the website. Can't wait to see you. Will the GOAT. Will underscore Gottlieb. Quaff King. Big Dave. B, uh, bow. BWL Sports. Bow. Joey Spathis. Joey Graphics. Pound Producer. Joey Multitask. <laughs> He's at Joey Spathis. I'm Bulls underscore Pack. We are CHU underscore Bulls. Appreciate y'all for hanging out with us tonight. Appreciate the super chats. Appreciate all of the chat. Uh, and we will... They'll talk to you on Monday. We'll all see y'all... <laughs> On Tuesday. Shot Valley Sports said, no, don't leave. <laughs> Sunday Sorry, night. Dog. Time to sleep if Gotta we sleep, can. Man. More than enough. That's real. More than enough. Come see us Tuesday. We'll see y'all see Tuesday. Julia. Mark and Will will see y'all man. tomorrow night. See you, be good. Wangs. Peace. Shout out Will's brothers and friends and people that are hanging out with us. We out. <laughs> Y'all silly like the mayor. 